Motivational Monday. We are here once again live and we want to welcome all of you into our program. Facing the Lion is always about emotions, feelings, and experience. Today is Motivational Monday. I hope your weekend was awesome, and welcome to our program. We're going to talk about our feelings, how we respond, our reactions, our thoughts, our moods. We're going to... show you boundary on this motivational Monday. We're going to show you accountability and responsibility. As you can see, our board here has accountability, responsibility. And we're going to talk about what is mine and what is not mine and as you were thinking about what is not yours and what is yours I want you to think about uh, the questions that may need to be answered now when we think about accountability how do we account for our thoughts and our feelings with experience, our decisions, and our truths? Um, how we respond, what we say. You know, Vibe Talk is not about telling you what to do, but basically helping you to understand how to do, when to do where to do, giving you the opportunity. So thank you for joining Vibe Talk, Facing the Lion. Thank you so much for being here. We are together. I want you to be thinking about your thoughts, feelings, decisions, and how you view them. Let's get together on this. Good morning, Trish. Good morning. It is so good to have you with us. So good to have you. Now, as we think about thoughts and feelings, we want you And all of you to remember accountability. So when you think about what belongs to you, let's think about, first of all, our thoughts. You know, a lot of people like to blame others for the way they feel, the way they think, the way they decide things. But now... What about you all? Do you realize think about our feelings? Sorry about that. Did I cut out on you, Trish? Yes, you did. I'm so sorry. 
<laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, our decisions and our thinking, we all vary from time to time. If I were to ask you what was the latest decision that you made, what would you say? What would you say about the latest decision you've made? Um, I've made I, the latest. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say a recent decision I made this morning is instead of drinking coffee, I decided to drink some tea. Yeah. How about that? And the latest decision I've made is to allow others to be responsible by letting them know, despite them not wanting to hear it, how I viewed their behavior without feeling like I'm going to rock the boat. You see how Trish and I differ? I've had to make a decision to be able to stand in my truth. We're going to be talking about that in just a moment. We're going to briefly pause. And so I ask that you guys bear with me. I forgot to do something. So just, just hang on just one second. One second, there's going to be a brief pausing. We're back. I apologize for that. I forgot to do something before I got on, so we apologize to you. Stay with us as we face our lions. We are back. What are you thankful for this morning? Trish, we'll start with you. I am thankful for beginning another week. Um, I think this week I can get more done than I did last week and so forth. So I'm thankful for another week. I love it. I love it. First, we're going to talk about what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for cooler weather, and I'll tell you why. 
cooler weather allows you to be able to adjust. When it's cooler, you can adjust by making your yourself warm. Uh, uh, we know that this is autumn. Autumn is what we all know as fall. We see change, change of weather, change of pattern. And uh, metaphorically, changes that come about can be the growth of something new. That's what I'm thankful for. We're going to talk about how we respond. How are we responding to what pe people say and what people do? We're going to set boundaries. We're going to be setting boundaries for ourselves. So... How do you respond when people talk negatively? Let's start with that one. How do you re respond, Trish? Usually I walk away or I zone out because I don't want to hear the negativity. Yeah. We want to think about our response. Um, we want to talk about ways that we can respond. For me, I respond to negativity. First, my mind shuts down. And my mind says, I don't want to hear it. If it's negative and we're going to talk about this let's get right into this I, I want to let you in on something on this Monday motivation how you respond is a choice you can choose to respond or not to respond It does, though, and it can affect the way that pe people view you. Here's the key. You rem remember when we talked about using a key in your emotional toolbox? This is when we'll need this key. Knowing how... how and when to respond is something that we all could use in improving ourselves. Because see, negativity, we do shut that out, and that's a normal thing. Trish and I had the same response. Now, when we're paying attention to people and allowing them to be able to express their thoughts. We do give responses. And that is a tool. Uh, when we text them in conversation or right there before them, we may want to successfully use the key of communication when responding. And we all have different forms of communication, right? Some of us like to text, some of us will pick up the phone, and even email, believe it or not, is still a thing. I don't email as much, though, but it's still a thing. We want to be able to respond appropriately. Come a little closer. When, when we're responding, we want to be able to respond appropriately. 
appropriately. Effective communication. We want to be able to, especially when we're texting, we want to be able to use appropriation. Because your key to communication expresses your thought, your idea, what it is that you'd like to say. Something to think about, isn't it? It really is. We talk about vibe talks, feelings, vibe talks, emotion. And here today on this Motivational Monday, we're going to learn how to respond. What did you gather from that, Trish, on response? I gathered that how we, re how we respond can also, like, affect how people feel about us or how they view us as a person or me as a person. And like you said, with the messaging, I can relate to that because I'm not a talker, but when I text in paragraphs, when we're having a discussion, when, when me and my friends are having a discussion, they think I'm upset because of I said a lot and they think I'm mad at them. So what I do is the emoji I put after that, I put a heart, knowing, letting them know this is out of love. I'm not yelling at you. If I was yelling at you, I would use all caps. <laughs> but yeah, it's how you respond to people is very important, how you respond to negativity. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. And I love how uh, Trish brought out about the using all caps. How many of you knew that when you use all caps, the other person thinks that you you are yelling at them. Yeah. Because that's what they think. So when we communicate, let's do so with appropriation. We are not responsible for how the other respond. Trisha and I gave you an example of how we respond to a situation. One was very similar, while the other one was different. I don't want you to compare yourself, but I want you to think about your wellness. What belongs to you? What you are in control of? How about what you do? How many times have we played the blame game? We say, I did this because you did that. What's wrong with that sentence? Why, why we're blaming the other person. We are taking responsibility because we acknowledge what it is that we've done. Good or not so good. Let's challenge ourselves on our actions. Let's talk about that for a minute. Challenging ourselves by actions. Okay, what you do affects others. How so? Well, when you do something, you're going to get a reaction. What you do affects others. How so? How do you think what you do affects others, Trish. How do you think that it does affect others? For example, if I was to if I was to yell at someone when they're just asking a question, asking me my opinion on something, it will affect them in a way that they're not going to ask me a question ever again because of my reaction to them asking me a simple question. Yes. 
we influence others behavior I influence others behavior you influence others behavior and sometimes we are in an awareness vibe talk facing the lion brings you to awareness of your actions and how they affect others now this may or may not trigger people that listen on this Mo Motivational Monday, but I want to teach you something, and I want you to understand. In your influence of affecting others, if you've got any young people, like in the ch childhood, it affects them. How do we know this? Because we talk a lot about our childhood, not in a negative way, but our childhood experiences. When you tell your experience, you have been affected by someone else's actions. At that, that time of your being affected by someone else's actions, you had no control over it because you were young, inexperienced. But now you are adulting. You are of that age. You have been affected by even your childhood experiences. Think about that. We could put you in a group of people. And we can ask you to tell us your experience. More than likely, there's going to be a similarity or two, but the experience of it, the outcome, the influence of it would differ. No, no two people have the, the exact same experience. So please realize that even at the youngest stage, what you do affects others. And, and this is the reason, too, of why we have Vibe Talk. We want you to become aware of how you've been affected. We don't want to tell you how you've been affected. We just want to bring you to awareness. You are influencing others. We know here at Vibe Talk when we come on, when you hear our podcast, that we are affecting others. We want you to think about your emotions and your actions and how they impact other people. You can impact other people for the good or or the bad. We are affecting other people, helping them to challenge their mental health and challenge their emotional health. Why are we doing this? Because we realize that your emotions go hand in hand with how you act, how you respond. One person doing something, whether it's your attitude or your behavior, can have a lasting effect on someone else's life. We want you to thrive, and we want to ask you this question at this time. Are you contributing in healthy and positive ways toward people's mental and emotional health. Think about that. And are the people that you are around every, every day, the, nor the, the normal circle that you have, because everyone has one, are they contributing? Are they helping to thrive? 
are they helping you to thrive? You have to think about that. And you would put in that category choice. You have choices. You can either build others up or tear them down. Your words, my words, they have the, the ability to either help or hurt, harm or humiliate. We must choose our words and how to use them. What you do. Um, when you are aware of your actions, because I'm not in control of your actions, when you're aware of how, how your actions are affecting others, that's simply called empathy. And I want everyone to think about empathy. Again, our actions affect other people. Now, you're not, not in control of the other person because what's mine is mine. How I respond, we talked about that. What I say, you're in control of what you say. You have the power to choose what you say. But now, now let's talk about what you are in control of. How do you and I not let other people and their actions affect you? Because sometimes you know what we say doesn't bother me. And then you go away and you're thinking about what that person has done. So in fact, it in fact does bother you. That's human nature. But here's where we need to create boundary. Every person that has ever lived has their space. We can demonstrate this. If you've ever been in a classroom, you're not all sitting on top of each other. If your desk is round and it's a big table, you have space enough. There's your chair and next to you, oh, about a few inches away, there's space for another chair and then it goes around and around. Have I created the idea for you that you all have space? Just remember that word. Do you find it helpful? To have that space. We started out with a classroom because everybody is familiar with a classroom. Whether you have been in grade school, college, you understand the space that you have. You're not all sitting on top of each other. Now, with that being said, boundaries have been set for you. Because every chair represents the space. You will sit at your desk. I will sit at mine. The other students will sit at theirs. Now, what I need you to do is talk about your boundaries. Because sometimes people don't realize boundaries. But boundaries are a safe space. Safe space for you. You will establish that. See how we don't tell you what to do? You will establish while you are having room for safe space. What is that boundary? And you have to be the one who discovers it. You have to be the one to say, this is safest for me. And I'm talking to you, ladies and gentlemen. Why am I talking to you? Because we have a lot going on in our world. Sometimes 
people don't create safe space. I'll give you another example. How many times have you been DM'd, direct messaged by an unwanted person on your social media? Has that ever, ever happened to you, Trish? Yes, a lot of times. Yeah. And how do you feel about someone doing that to you? We're not talking about advertisements. We're talking about them getting in your space on your page. How do you feel about that? I feel very claustrophobic and uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So you need what then? I need my space. Yeah. You see how we say that? We need our space. We say that a lot, right? say we need space as if someone is going to do that we must take the initiative to do it on our own it is not, not the other person's responsibility it is my responsibility to create the space that I need I've been really doing that lately and I don't feel guilty about that sometimes you e I I have even had to tell a person you're in my space. You know? You don't have to have someone create a space for you. You can establish the space you want to create it. Did you get it by the desk that I talked about? You all can understand that. You know, we get on that that uh, may try to, especially ladies and gentlemen, you know, you might get somebody that you don't even know trying to date you, thinking you're attractive, um, all kind of stuff. And I want to just remind you that we do have social media, and we know that people are affected by our page because... They're responding. So take the time to create, say, space. Save space. Now let's go back to the classroom because I think this illustration is fitting. Suppose you were to go to the classroom and all the desks stacked on top of each other. Is that safe space for you? What do you think, Drish? I'd say no. Why, Why not? not? Because um, where am I going to say it if it's all together? Yeah. So life can be like those stacked tables. And that's why you have that create the space. You don't need the teacher to say unstack the table. I would hope that you all would think the way my co-host where am I going to sit? Well, you don't need the teacher to tell you to take the chairs down or the table down. You're going to create a space. Some of you are even going to find a space to sit on the floor. You see how I illustrated that? You don't need to be told about creating safe space. You're going to find safe space. We want to empower you and motivate you to start doing that. Do not be absorbed by other people's emotion. That is their emotion. I want you to be able to let, let your energy set the boundary for you. You, you may determine how you want to feel. You know, Johnny Joe comes in and they're feeling rained on, but there is no rain. 
You know, these are the people that have the black cloud. And if they, they come in every day like that, it's going to affect you. You have a choice to consume Johnny Joe's, and I'm just using a name, no, no real name that I know of. Are you going to consume that energy or not? And it goes like this, too. Susie Sunshine comes in. We all like to soak up the sun, right? So we're going to go to that energy. We're not going to be around the black clouds because we know that it has a negative effect. I want you all to know in that illustration that I just gave you, some of you may not even recognize that you are feeling that way. But you have a choice to create a space for yourself. You have to know that your responsibility is yours. Sometimes you may go to podcasts and they're going to tell you exactly what to do, when to do. This podcast helps you to make awareness of your mental and your emotional health, health and help. You're going to be the decider. How did you gather that, Trish? What was just said? What did you think about that? I think we have um, the ability, I got from that, that we have the ability to decide how we create our space because at the end of the day, we are the founders of our personal space. And every space is different from another's. Like, mm -hmm. for example, when I go into class i rather sit in the front because i learn better when i sit in the front and i'm more focused while somebody else would rather sit in the back because they feel their space is better without that much people around them and they can listen better by themselves it doesn't mean that their space or my space is wrong it's just it's what i find better for me and what they find better for them. Yes. Did you guys feel that? Every individual has their own space. I want you to think about that in your actions. We'll be right back. Vibe Talk Facing the Lion is all about feelings and emotions. Did you know that Vibe Talk Facing the Lion is going to be group session. If you'd like to get with Vibe Talk, message us or connect with us at 661-503-8993 or you can just simply drop us a message. We're back. We're going to talk about our truth. Everybody views their truth differently. You know, you know I, I always used to tell my kids, there is your truth, my truth, <laughs> And the truth. And I, I say that LOL because how many of us say that? When people say your truth. Your truth is how, how you feel, what you believe. And I want you to understand that everybody is different. 
we get national truth from everyone who claims their truth. But now, think about your truth. What has been some of your truths? Think about it. Think about your our true value. Think about uh, when people will say, I'm telling the truth. You know, in the court system, they always say this, and you could probably recite it. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the you fill in the blank? Does that necessarily mean that people are telling the truth? What has statistics shown us even in the court system? You know, I'm a, a, a I love Judge Judy. I really, really do. And when I watch these court shows, Judge, and I like Judge Mathis too, and I watch these people that say, I'm telling the truth. And they both have two variations of the truth. And maybe it is not a lie, but it, it does become their truth. Did everybody get that? Did you get that, Trish, or no? I did. Now, here's a saying. Those who have had fake external calmness while experiencing big internal emotions, I see you. There's a lot to hold. May you find safe space to express your truth. Don't worry, I'm going to post this today. I'm going to read it one more time. And I quote, to those who have to those who have had to fake external calmness while experiencing big internal emotions. I see you. It's a lot to hold. May you find safe space to express your truth. A lot of times we have dealt with families. And that's why I will caution you as you come to our group, as you make appointments individually with me. If your family members and you do a one-on-one, -on -one, I will never tell what the other person said, but if, if you come in as a group, I need you to respect your family members. Maybe they're going to tell how they experienced something, and you say, uh-uh, that's not the truth. Keep in mind that it is their truth. The way they see things. I don't like it when people say, that's not the truth. Well, maybe it's not your truth, but it's my truth. Please respect people. Please respect them because you are validating them when you say, hey, I understand your truth. That helps a lot in families, too, because sometimes families, they get together and they may argue, and you're going back and forth. Just remember, you have your truth, and I have my truth. This it's very powerful today. We hope that you will be motivated to look at 
your truth. There's a line in one of our introductory songs. And Trish, we again thank you so much for that song. And it says, every time you come to Vibe Talk, you get the truth. I love that line. What did you mean by that, Trish? I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you that. It means that when you come to, you. to Vibe Yes. To me, okay. To me, to me, it meant I feel... When I come here, I feel like it's raw, it's real. You're not holding back. Everything is laid out on the table, but in a way where you can't just deny it. You have to be direct to yourself. That's what I meant. Yeah, and I, that's what I knew. I love that line. You'll get a chance to hear it again when we close. I want you all to think about what your truths are. And don't hold back. Lay it on the table. If it's one thing at a time. Because sometimes we have so many overwhelming truths that we lose sight of the fact of what really is truth. Let's start one at a time by laying the card down, so to speak. Feelings. You always hear Vibe Talk talk about feelings will be right back after this. Did you know that Vibe Talk Facing the Lion podcast is streaming wherever you listen to your favorite podcast? We're back. Feelings. You say, but those are my feelings. Your feelings. Why do you think it's important to express your feelings? This will start with you. I think it's important to express your feelings because because when people see that you do feel, for example, anger or being sad, and you're not this Superman person. They they'll see you know what I can relate to that person. This person's on ground level. Like these feelings are not beyond them. So expressing your feelings make you relatable, and it shows that you are human. Yeah. Thank you you so much for that we think about our emotions how we feel it actually empowers us and motivates us to connect deeper with ourselves. you know like we do the mirror talk the mirror talk is standing at the mirror and being able to see yourself your likes your dislikes not in a in an external way, not on the outside, but look at yourself deeply within. I think that's such a good way to help us to understand how to communicate with ourselves. We must connect with ourselves before we can connect with other people. You know, you ask a person, what are they grateful for? And they're stuck on Oh, and ums. The more that you find out about yourself, the easier that question is going to be because you're not going to be stuck. You're going to say, I know what I'm grateful for. We get you to express yourself because what I might be grateful for, maybe you're going to be grateful for something else. We're all human and we're all allow, allowed to express our emotions. But what it does provide for you is to connect with yourself, bringing awareness, bringing awareness 
being able to control to express uh, your emotion and your true feelings when you're being open and honest. I, I find great value in being able to express your feelings while you express your feelings you're helping others to see your value of you they get to know you and we don't want you to feel embarrassed because some of you are still struggling with expressing how you feel we are covering a book this week we're going to be back into the book i know you guys have not saw or heard about it but it's going to talk about an array of feelings that book is feelings buried alive never die we, we that book encourages you not to bury your feelings because they don't die. We want you to express how you feel, starting with one thing at a time. When you're able to express your feelings, that is emotional intelligence. We want you to be able to express your feelings Because it's essential to your communication. We want you to be able to do that. We want you to be able to tell someone how you're feeling. If you're not feeling well, communicate that. If you're feeling sad, communicate that. Again, again. I want you to understand that we are not the podcast to tell people what to do. We help you to help yourself. When we keep things in, what does it create for us when you keep things in? What do you think it creates for you when you keep things in? I say self-destruction. Yeah. Causes you to have stress, anxiety. We want you to think about emotional intelligence and how very vital that is. The thing that we motivate you with, the feelings of being able to use positive self-talk because you have used some of you have used so much negative inner feelings. When expressing your feelings or having someone express their feelings, it is important to remember to be a good listener. I love this saying, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Are we really exercising that? Because we say that. We say that. We want even our young people. I a lot of times we're using with my grandson. Use your words. The other day we played a game. And I said, show me your happy face. Show me your sad face. Show me your surprise face. And we were doing it. And then I said, show me your stubborn face. And he stopped me. And you know what he said, the four-year-old? He said, wait, I don't know what that is. Some of us are walking around not knowing what we are, and we're past the age of four years old. We're still in a moment of unawareness, just like my grandson 
was unaware of stubborn. Get familiar with your feelings, even if you need to be able to write them down. We want you to be able to express how you truly feel. Good show today because it's going to motivate you all to do something. It's going to motivate me to do something. Thoughts. You're in control of your own thoughts. We've talked about that. What you think is in your brain. I want everyone to touch your brain. You have a left brain, right brain, frontal lobe, and the back of your brain. Have you found out how beautiful your brain works. You possess your thinking. You are the holder. You are the key keeper to every thought. No one can steal your thoughts. You know, I hear people say that. They stole my thought. You know how Powerless, that sounds, because nobody is able to steal your thought. And I understand it's just a saying, but in Vibe Talk, you get to be familiarized with terminology. No one can steal your thought. If you're giving that kind of power to someone to steal your thought, then I'm asking that you reclaim your thought. Create new ways. because. No one has the power to steal your thoughts. That's not possible. They may say something similar, but you can create your own thoughts. What's yours is yours, and what's mine is mine. How many of us have an opinion? Anybody have a, an opinion? I do. What's your opinion about soda? It's it's fun to drink, but too much of it is not good for you. <laughs> yeah. And here's my here's my opinion. I love, love Sprite, especially mixed with lemonade. That's my thought. But here's the opinion. I love Sprite. Not everybody loves Sprite. Not everybody feels that soda, too much of it, is a bad thing. Or not healthy, I should say, because I want to use terminology. Everyone has an opinion, right? Do we respect the right for everyone? have their own opinion. You know, a lot of times, and I want to bring Facebook into life, thank you, Facebook, for letting us be able to come to here and do these lives. We appreciate them, and we're going to be hearing this podcast on any podcast you are listening to. Follow it there. But I want to say something. You ever look at the comment section of anything that you may post a like to? How many of you have done that? I do. Yeah? Do the uh, opinions of others make you laugh? You? Yeah. I, I'm fine. I crack up. And you say what? I'm just here for the comments because you know it's going to be funny. People are so opinionated by what they think and by what they feel. Don't post anything about animals because they're going to give you their opinion. You know, some people talk about a lot of things. But this is not a podcast 
on opinion. This is a podcast on feelings, your feelings, your thoughts. Do you know why we keep away from opinions? Trish, would you like to tell them why we don't challenge anybody's opinion? Um, to me, I think it's because we're focused on more focused on how they're feeling the facts. That's what I think. Yeah, we're more focused on that. That's fact. 100%. Because you see, everybody has an opinion just like everybody has a feeling. So when people come in with their own opinions, we respect that. And we're asking that your opinion be your opinion. That's why we don't say, do this, do that. We just share with you motivational things. Because everybody, if I told you to everybody do this, you're going to come out with different results. So your opinion is your opinion. And we value your opinion. We value your opinion. Let's go with decisions. I asked the question earlier, what decisions were you making? When was the last time you made a good decision? We're going to go a little deeper and I'm going to leave you with room to think about the question. When you're making decisions, because we all have to make decisions, what to buy at the grocery store, what not to eat, what medicines we need to take, going to the doctor, uh, not seeing a therapist. Uh, do, do we want to care for our mental health? Uh, do we want to continue to get better? I'm using that because right now we talk about decisions with our emotion and mental health. I want to bring you a little bit closer. I am not going to tell you if you should see your psychologist or not, be in recovery or not. I'm not going to tell you what your decision should be. I, I want to motivate you to gain the power because you are not powerless. To think about your decisions. And that, that comes under the category of knowing what is in your best interest. Some of us grown people are walking around as if we can't make up our mind. I want you to point to your mind. Remember we talked about that front, left side. Now right side, now back side, okay? Your brain has many sides to it. And yet, your brain is no bigger than a fist. If even that big, it may be the size of a walnut. But you do have one. And by walnut, there is no pun intended when I say nut. Because we're all human. You have the ability to be motivated to think for yourselves. Stop allowing other people to make your decision for you. You know, you want little kids and I know you're all familiar with this you take them to a candy store they're not going to ask you what candy to get they're going to go and get candy See, they don't need you to tell them that you're in a candy store and we're here to buy candy they're going to say 
mom, dad, can I have this? They're going to put stuff in your basket because they're at the candy store. So your life, even though it may not be candy-like, you have the right. You have the power to choose your own decision, to make your own decisions. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking to you because some of you are in situations. Situations, circumstances. What has been your decision? Some of you are in abusive relationships and you're waiting for people to say, get out of that relationship relationship and even after they tell you to get out of that relationship you decide for whatever reason you're going to stay a little bit longer I'm going to tell you right now and pull up your chair you have to make your decisions we're not a breakup family but what is your decision have you challenged yourself to think for yourself. To think for yourselves. And parents, we know that, that you bear the responsibility of telling your children how to make healthy decisions. And if they're already making healthy decisions, you're helping them to make healthier decisions. It's not always a good thing to tell your older children what decisions you will make. It's not always in their best interest. And it's not saying don't tell your children what to do. I'm not in any way of implying that. Because as long as they're living in your house, they must make the decision to listen to the rules. You got that, kids? I don't care if you're 18 to 55. You're still living in your parents' home. You must listen to their rules. But now are we letting our children grow up to thrive? Because a lot a lot of times what we've done is make the decisions for them when they're 21 and above. We're making decisions instead of seeing what they will do. We've crippled them when they can't make decisions. So you have to look at yourself and think about the decisions that you were able to make because we understand some of you have come from places where every decision was made for you. And so now you've been shifted into an adult world and you don't know how to make a decision. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Challenge, challenge, challenge. Become independent and in being able able to say I have made my decision. We talked about reactions, moods. Oh boy, am I a moody person? Are you a moody person, Trish? It depends. Yeah. I am the moodiest of the moodiest. <laughs> But I'll tell you something. My mood does affect other people. And that's where your space comes in. If, if I'm very quiet, most people know don't bother me. Now see, I'm not a person that you have to say what's wrong I will tell you what's wrong so in my personal life people know me that way but here's what I cannot stand 
when I am in a mood and it's it's not a very good day and people refuse to, to analyze and say, well, she's not her normal self, so let me just leave her alone. They come and get in your space. You know what that's like? The stack tables in the classroom we talked about. I've had that happen in my life, and it keeps happening. And that's why you have to set for yourself, not them, your boundary. They mean well, but they just don't see it. And you know what I take it as? People can't even deal with their own emotion. Some days I'm struggling with feelings more than I do in other So my mood, I want to be the person who says, I'm not the dark cloud, and I don't want to affect the others around me. So I will take my space. What am I saying with a person that has moods? That's not, not weird. Respect their mood. Sometimes we live with individuals in our physical houses that are moody. It has affected us, but it's not your mood. What would you say about your moods? You said earlier, Trish, it depends. Can you tell us about that? Um, it depends on if I'm angry. I had a uh -huh. situation. I had a situation this week, and I w I was in a disagreement in a friend's group chat. So I left so I wouldn't get out of my character. I was protecting who I am as a person, and somebody told me. Oh, it's good. It's fine. They're chill. Like you come, you can come back into the group chat. I'm like, no. Nope. If I have a feeling that they're gonna say something to make me upset, I'm not going back in there. So, and people and the person added me back anyway. But I have control over my phone, so I just put mute and I just ignored the group chat. And, you know, I have to protect my space when I'm in an angry mood because I know how I am. I will never stop talking when I'm mad. Like, I will say everything that I felt about that person from the day I first met them all the way until now when I'm mad. So I have to step back and get my train of thoughts. Thank you for that. Speaking of moods. How many of you have ever said, I'm in a bad mood, and you answer your phone, knowing that you're in a bad mood? It is your phone. You do, you know, Trish said something very profound. She can mute her phone. You see the things you can do with the powerful brain that you have. So many choices. So, it is Motivational Monday. We're calling this podcast What's Mine is Mine. That's what we're calling it. You've just been shown how to be motivated to do something. Challenge yourself through these feelings. You know, through the weekend, I always look through what I want to talk about, and this one came across me, and I love this. Many of you will use this if you've seen it on the internet. You will use it in different ways, but I thought to use this as a guide for our conversation today. We will be right back with Trisha's treasure. Did you know that you could find in Vibe Talk? on Google, Alexa, 
in Siri. All you have to do is, hey Siri, give me Vibe Talk Facing the Lion podcast. Apple Podcasts will search for it. Right to it, ladies and gentlemen. Join us there. And thank you for joining Live Talk Facing the Lion podcast. We're back. And we're going to turn it over to Trisha's treasure. So I, I've been, I've read, actually, I read a book called Faith Under Fire by LaJoyce Brookshire. It's a very good book. It's about being a woman, being in a relationship where there are signs about her spouse that she dismissed. And what I'm proud about in this book is that she showed accountability. And in certain parts in her relationship, her husband tried to get her to dismiss what she's good at, which is being a radio host and things of that sort. But she stood her ground and respected and, and gathered in her own establishment, in her own space, and what she's good at. She started her own business, and basically, she said the phrase, you can't tell me what I can't do. And there's so many times where, in my mind, I thought, I thought it, I thought the phrase, but I never practiced it. I never put it into action. And it's like me taking my own power in that sense, because I have the ability to say no. I have the ability to say not today. And I have the ability to say I can't do it right now. I'll talk to you later you know in situations like that so take back the power that you have in accountability and respecting your own space and building your own space and knowing what's yours the mind you have is yours your body is yours and your knowledge that you have in your experience that you experience in your life it is yours it is your life and you have the power to know and to practice what you're going to do with it. So cherish your space and cherish what you are, are capable of doing and controlling. That is our Monday motivation from Trisha's Treasures. To my amazing co-host, thank you so much. She's been putting up with me. And we're not here every day, but we have something for you every day. And our live times, in order for you to catch us, please follow us. Do yourself a favor. And remember, what is yours is yours, and what is mine is mine. Look for us in our latest podcast on YouTube. Please join our YouTube channel. Share it. We're so excited. By the way, guys, we're almost at the end of the year. Can you believe it? Welcome to fall. Our vibe talk question. What do you feel would help you express your truth. What, and I'm going to break it down. What helps you to express your truth? What would help you? That's our vibe talk question. Throughout the day, if you come across this, you can even put that answer here. 
let us know where you're from. Look for our, our live talk streaming on your podcast platforms, wherever you're listening. We're there. Thank you so much. And the last question of the day. Chris, what is our last question of the day? What have you learned or discovered about yourself, and what was your experience like here today? I love that question. I'll start with me. What did I discover about myself that I want to always say what I mean and not have a sec a person second guess me, but clearly communicate how I feel, and I've been really practicing that, challenging myself. And you don't have to be mean to do that. You can just bring clarity into your life. That creates a safe space for me. And I feel really motivated to do more with that. Trish, I asked you the same question. What did you discover about yourself in today's Motivational Monday? Uh, and how does it make you feel? Today, I discovered that I'm getting better at protecting my space and setting boundaries. I'm so proud of myself. Yeah, <laughs> I'm proud of you too. I'm so proud That's of myself good. because I have trouble with that. Like, it is very hard for me to set boundaries because I have this I have this script in my mindset about saying that if I set boundaries I don't love people and I don't care but that is not true that is no longer my truth my truth is setting boundaries creates my own personal space and that protects me and my character. And my experience here today was also motivational. I'm very excited to continue to create boundaries and have a safe space and a safe place for me and my mental love house. In my mental house. I love, love, love that. May you take these things and be more motivated to challenge yourself. Life Talk is all about challenging ourselves, uh, knowing how to challenge yourself and when to challenge yourself. I thank you, Trish. Thank you, everyone who's listening. If you're listening to the podcast, please let us know where you're from. And uh, don't forget to join us on Saturday evenings. I don't really have a time. I just know it'll be after dark. And if you're around the world, just keep checking. We're on Instagram Live. It's your opportunity to come chat with us. We're going to be in our, our fifth episode, I believe. And we're going to start hashtagging those as well. Uh, Vibe Talk, uh, Facing the Lion, Podcast After Dark. Look for it on Instagram. That's where we'll be Saturday evenings. Okay? Thank you all for joining us. I wish you more motivation. Have a good day. I can't even get the song. That wasn't the song. Sorry, guys. I'll get with it. (laughs) 
one moment. Thank you so much, Trish, for all of your hard work. Thank you. We'll be back this week. Really about the moves that then I got the vibe with it. I really took my time with it. I really love the ride with it. Really, really got the vibe with it. I took my time with it. I really love the ride with it. Every time I come, yeah, get the truth. I'm really in the vibe with it. Yeah, I'm really in the vibe with it. Yeah, I'm really in the vibe with it. Yeah, I'm really in the when you get the vibe with it, yeah. When you get the vibe with it, yeah. Yes, I'm not just saying something. It's about commitment.